Just put it in the headline, and I'll give you a clip. Bulldog? he never do that! Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm on this like weird nocturnal schedule, so I can hang out with everyone. But it's fine. Like it's nice. I got a girl here. Um, I have work. Apparently, bonus work that I you can't talk about yet because you're gonna put this out before it's announced. And then, uh, ch- cheap as shit, dude. It is cheap as shit. I, hold on, I'm yeah. I'm more caught up on the girl. Like, how do, how does how does uh, casual <laughs> dating work in Kiev? Is it just still a Tinder situation? Oh, I got super super lucky. She never wants children. She uh, plans on moving back to a different city slash travel the world once quarantine ends. So, like, we're exclusive, but not, uh, like, it's not you're anything exclusive. crazy. Yeah. However, uh, you're however, wait, is this going to be put on the internet? You've got to cut this out. I like her. She's fun. She's also, like, super affectionate. And also, mm-hmm. there's this, like, Ukrainian culture is very different from American. So this is, like, by far the most I've ever been, like, taken care of by a woman ever in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, nice. yeah, it's super nice. It's weird. Usually I was just waiting to see, like, the what, what I did wrong. Whereas she's just, like, happy to see me. And she likes to scratch my head. I'm just like, all right, I can live with this. Or does she just want a visa? Is this going to be, like, some 30-day fiancé TLC shit? Nah. Nah. <laughs> Much like everyone else I've ever dated or even hooked up with, I always tell them to get involved with esports. So we'll see. Uh, we're going to a barbecue at both main cast and then another one with We Play. So I'm like, well, if you can't get a job there, you probably fucked. Is that the <laughs> best pillow talk conversation? It's like, ah, oh, that was good. Um, you should get an esports job. It happens. I mean, that's what else do I know in my life, man? It's like very <laughs> limited, very <laughs> limited Charlie topics here. <laughs> Charlie and I tell actively tell Joey, don't go into esports, Doc. <laughs> I know. It was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I'm happy that I did it. We'll see. What? I was about to say, aren't you like happy? Yeah. Okay. But you're, ha- yeah. you're happy with your job now, right? Yeah, but that's a lie. Like, someone at Liquid's going to listen to that. And they're going to be like, mm, maybe we should reconsider. Like, I'm very happy. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> happy. Everybody, I'm very happy. Mike, I'm very happy. <laughs> but you know what would make him happier? Maybe a 20% raise. Just saying. We could settle for 10 20 is the offer. Just a little bit. It's hard to do the 90-day review thing to really, like, cement the position when everyone is, like, working from home and in quarantine. It's like, hey, do I ask for a raise now that uh, we're – I mean, we're actually haven't cut any staff, which is remarkable. But I know, a lot, like, almost every other org is struggling. You look at, like, FlyQuest or Complexity or basically anyone else. Um, and it's like, ugh, man, I feel, I feel bad for them. And I'm just lucky to be like, hey, I'm employed. So I guess I'm not going to rock the boat until maybe we have a vaccine. We're not going to have a vaccine uh, anytime soon. My brother's pre-med. When I asked no. him what the real... Uh, is, hang on. My fourth brother is very much a straight shooter, okay? To the point where he can be a little mean. A lot mean, if you don't know him. Think Zach, but, like, more, right? Okay. And when we asked him, hey, so what are the chances of a cure or vaccine in our, like, family group call? He just started doing an exaggerated evil laugh. Like, ha, 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 you're fucked. And that was pretty much it. So I don't expect the vaccine until 2021, even if yeah, Moderna Joey. is going to triple in price by then. This is this is the new norm. Much much how we have adjusted the podcast and now just being purely online at this point. Uh, you're going to have to adjust your expectations uh, of a raise at all, or you're going to have to bite the bullet and ask for a raise yep. and potentially get someone can to pay you more money. Hey, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna. And I there. I got a little song for you as well. And it goes like this. How would you like to make more money? Just move away from Los Angeles. Why the fuck do you live in Los Angeles? It's so world. fucking expensive. It's Joey, 13, have you experienced, 13% uh, state tax. Yeah, that's have fine. you experienced you should, you Kyle's should improv taxes. songs before? No, I haven't. That's great. I was imagining like it's, a fiddle It's wonderful, or a isn't it? You were doing a guitar <laughs> thing, but I was really thinking like almost like, like a traveling this, singer type. Majestic. This is actually... Just Uncle Sam and Gavin Newsom. They're their weight they want their cut of everything that you do. Hey man, also you're in the city with the highest cost of living behind San Francisco and New hey, York. Hey man. In the world. California, all things considered, doing pretty good on Corona. I'm not mad paying taxes. I'm happy to support society. I'm not trying to like escape to Florida to pay no taxes. Like I get it. It's fine. Like I don't need more for me. I, I want other people around me to be happy. <laughs> Look at the incredulous look on Kyle's face. 
You want to I'm pay just... taxes? <laughs> do, you, do you do swallow that shit after you cook it up, or do you I'm just not, like? I'm not trying to move to like Sweden and give away all my money, right? Like within reason, but yeah, I'm, I like I don't need to like go have some some international bank account silo or move to a no sales tax you know, state. Like I like the, know, the infrastructure we have here. You know, your average Californian pays pretty similar amounts of money as the average Swede, except you don't get health care or education or yeah, social safety up. net. <laughs> all of that's fucked up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue any of that. But that's more than a California problem, my friend. Touche. So. Kyle, do you feel shamed for trying to dodge out on taxes and not supporting your fellow man? <laughs> Have you seen what our government's budget is like segmented into is like percentages? Like I I am very confident that I will spend my money more efficiently in terms of benefiting the human condition on planet Earth than the government would with the same amount of money. Well, we so you're enjoying so your time in tanks. Ukraine then? Yes, I am, Cap. Thank you. <laughs> what was the question, Lee, for there? <laughs> Just like, we can buy more tanks with that money. We need more money to buy tanks and fighter jets. How long have you been in Ukraine for? Uh, hopefully less than three months, because I don't have a visa, and that's when it would technically expire, but it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> As we could see. Ask Kyle where I am in a month. Of, uh, of shirking of both taxes and and international law. Hey. It's fine. You're just a world traveler at this point. Like, where? When's the last time you've been Ugh. home? Well, it was supposed to be ESL LA. So oh. if you want, I'll just give you a little backstory. Okay. Um, so I was doing the minor in Kiev. Mm -hmm. Don't say it, Cap. I was doing an event in Kiev, and I was then flying to um, uh, to home. But I think that in order to like save money on flights, I instead I went from Kiev to London. I stayed with Sujoy uh, for what would have been four or five days, and then I was gonna fly over to ESL LA. Mm -hmm. And the day of my the day the night before my flight, um, I woke up at like five in the morning, still a little inebriated, and I have eight different text uh, groups open. Maybe more like 15. I don't remember. But one of whom is like my dad, who's also called me three times. And then like my mom, the ESL group, everyone just effectively freaking out like, holy shit, it's shut down. It's shut down. And I'm just like, oh, God, what do I do now? Because I'm homeless. So I'm just like, well, fuck. Where do I go? And I'd ask Sujoy, you know, like, I kind of sussed out Sujoy. And I could have stayed there for an indefinite period of time. But like, he didn't really want me to. <laughs> obviously i didn't really want to just be like yo dude so that four days what if it was just like 40 man like let's just add some zeros <laughs> also the only place that could have possibly ended up worse than america at that time with the information i was gathering was the uk yeah. herd immunity <laughs> bros let's just all get sick like we'll just can. we'll just all get it and then everybody won't need it anymore anyway so the choices were uh taiwan um, because I had some friends there and they also, I figured we're going to handle the virus the best. And they did and, by and far. You'd been, you'd been living there for a while. Correct. Before. Uh, after TI, I was there for like two months or so. And I really like their Taiwan's gorgeous, beautiful place. The world health organization is a fucking sham because they still don't recognize Taiwan who have killed this virus. They are, I'm looking at my friends and what they're doing. And it's just business as fucking usual. They haven't had a new case in like a month. It's incredible. Um, but then uh, Warlock from We Play had also hit me up. They were doing this charity tournament. And he's like, we want to come to Kiev. And they had announced border lockdowns T-minus Monday. And it was Saturday. So I had to make a decision really quick. And I chose Kiev because um, there's like three studios here. I have a much larger like eSport network. And I foresaw potentially getting stuck for about a year. And in Taiwan, it would have been like a better quality of life 
-hmm. but also more expensive. I didn't have the same benefits like here where I have a 240 hertz monitor and a computer and internet and an apartment all because of my friends that like hooked me up. We play with the computer, my friend like scouting the apartment while I was in quarantine, et cetera, et cetera. So I had an actual network that could assist me in setting up for the long term, whereas Taiwan, I would just been on my ass plus a mandatory 14 day lockdown plus possibly no work for the foreseeable future. It just didn't really make sense. So I got on a plane to Kiev, uh, seven hours later and now i'm here and i'm still here and hopefully i will stay here depending on visa situations but that's it the end that's wild how, how long like you've been kind of globe trotting for a hot minute right yeah about uh ever since i got kicked from complexity and thus had to vacate my house in texas i have not had a home address i ditched my stuff at my mom's i ditched some stuff at my dad's i've also ditched some stuff at fogg's house owen and Sheev's house pinned in pile i die's house and i've given some stuff away and i've lost some stuff and uh yeah i actually need to buy some more stuff because i only have like three pairs of pajamas so i gotta do laundry every two days That's the priority. The out of all the things you could have lost it's the pajamas that you need the most yes i mean yeah he's Bro. a gamer what it's Lounge quarantine home all time what what, you what, what, what do you guys go out these are these are tortoise i'm not wearing guys, pants right, right now I pants on i'm naked <laughs> Me too. <laughs> just for the viewers at home, just know I am wearing pants. Don't worry. <laughs> Unlike being, these savages. Thank you for being a real professional. Hey, man, no one, it's work from home. No one sees me below the waist ever anymore. So why mm -hmm, bother? Mm -hmm. Why bother? Yeah. If you're not willing to shave the beard, that's not going to change anytime soon. Dude, it's been fucking rough. I did it so that we can look just a little bit more. I've been preparing for the podcast for like two months so we can give people some kind of <laughs> distinction between us. I'm just not cutting any of my yeah. hair. So that's really the. the I like that you part it. You part it the other direction. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it great. It goes up, but it, there's so much it can't stay up anymore. It's, it's a fucking disaster. I, I know what that's like. Hair just to be a little different as well. Mm -hmm. Kyle, you have. Is that a goatee? Is that what you I don't know. Like, it's what, it's what whatever my face looks like, man. I think it's the Fu Manchu. Do you if you get this. Okay. But you're still I don't shave yourself. anything. You don't shave anything. I do sometimes, but bro, it grows really quickly. And I also, it's still patchy. My dad couldn't get a real beard until he was like 35. He fucked us. <laughs> I guess yeah, well, it's than... okay. I, I don't think uh, the three of us, between the three of us, none of us can grow a, a nice big beard. No yeah. offense, Joey. <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's it doesn't work for any of us. <laughs> I look like I, I should. I, I look like I shouldn't live within a hundred feet of a school. Like I'm legally obligated. <laughs> to <not do> that. <laughs> uh, uh, so go off. To, mm -hmm. <laughs> you go first, Cabby. No, I was no, going to no, no. just I say. I hear what you wanted to say. I I just realized I'm talking about it like it was recent, but like getting kicked from coal was um over two years ago, like a couple of yes. months ago. So it's been a long been fucking a time for a very long time. Yeah. It's been a lot of life, though. I realized recently, I was like thinking back, and a lot of times when people look at their past, it's like, oh my god, time's flown. But I look back at a, like that event, and I'm just like, holy shit, that was only two years ago. Because like a lot of stuff has happened since then. And it's, a, I mean, you know, this is typical, uh, like, woe is me. You know, I'm very happy that my quarantine doesn't really affect my career too much. But I am very sad because this spring, summer, was quite possibly going to be like the best of my life. Um, the events coming up were incredible. Like Birmingham is a blast. It's Singapore, Epicenter. I was going to go to my first wedding in like Eastern Romania out in the country. We're probably going to like, I don't know. I have no idea if do some voodoo or some wait, shit. Wait, wait, <laughs> when <laughs> were you supposed to go to a wedding in, in, out in the woodlands in Romania? Because I was right about now, actually. To go to it. Really? Really? It was the, yeah. it was this past weekend was when it was scheduled for. Oh, is it for the the friend that I met? He's the guy who posted on Reddit that he met his girlfriend. Yeah, through, through Dota. Through yep. Dota. Okay. Okay. It was uh it was Ellie's sister. She was supposed to have her wedding sometime in the co next couple of months. And it was going to be way out there in the in uh Way outside of Bucharest. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, that's all I know too. I didn't even know where I was gonna stay. They're like, he's just like, yeah, my friend's got a house. You can just stay with them. They're kind of Dota fans, so they'll like it. And I was like, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> you could see a clear difference. <laughs> Similar situation, almost near exact situation yeah. for the two of us. And Kyle, very excited for it. Me, not at all. 
you're thinking about the oh, we're gonna, like, flight and the tickets. I was just like, ah, oh, I don't want to travel time. that far. I have to travel. I'm traveling Dude, to Bucharest, but it's oh, outside of Bucharest see, on top of that. You get a boring this, wedding to go to. A bunch of family members I have to meet. Ugh. This is why, one, being just the single guy from America, is like, hey, what's up? I'm homeless, <laughs> is awesome because you can just be an easy plus one. And two, it was, I don't have to fly anywhere. So the schedule was going to be do Epicenter in Moscow dope stay a couple extra days in russia possibly go to st petersburg because that's where my grandparents said their favorite city of all time was then fly to bucharest chill kick my feet up for a couple days go to this wild wedding fly to london chill with sue joy for like three four days go to birmingham for the event then possibly the like talent vacay in like i don't know italy or something drink wine eat pasta and then it was going to be singapore it just sounds exhausting. It sounds like a blast. What do you mean? I'm somewhere in between you much. two. That, that, that's not too much, Cap. Like, you sound like an old man right now, but also that it it's still much. might be a little bit. As long as you get Listen, two days to DJ. Talent BK was the only thing in that list that I deem acceptable. Talent BK would have been sick. We're still going to do it at some point, I hope, but we'll see. In 2022 at this point? Yeah. yeah some, all the money you'll have saved. Really. Or will you not but be yes, saving money? If I'm no making any. Yeah, exactly. Is it not like, is, is the scene collectively concerned? They're like, shit, how are we going to pay our mortgages this year with no TI? Well, you're really talking to the wrong people because Kyle and I are in the best situation. Kyle is holed up in Ukraine where he's getting gigs with WePlay and I'm sure you'll- They don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> the borders are closed. Yeah, they're like, fuck, and well, I guess we have one option. Yeah, and then I'm in, in L.A. where I've got BTS. Uh, so I, I did ESL1. He did We Play. I'm going to do ESL1. I'm sure there's another We Play coming up. Like, we're both going to be working pretty continuously. Honestly, the situation is working out really well, I think, for, for both of us. So <laughs> we're the wrong people to talk yeah. to, sadly. We, if we got, like, Trent on the phone, I'm sure he's he's pretty uh, unhappy about this situation. Yeah, he's the fortunate part Canada. for these casters, like, at least there's online games like we play is doing with their online casters and stuff but uh it it definitely ti is definitely a big blow for for almost everybody yep and uh to go off of that it's very sobering for me because obviously like what cap's saying is 100 percent true to the point where i kind of feel like guilty in a lot of ways because not only is our industry doing much better than most others but mm. i and part of why I'm in Kiev is because it just made the most sense and it's a pretty good position to be in. There are three studios here. Um, at multiple esports teams based here. It's just sort of the place to be. And um, I can't say the same for most of my family and most of my friends that aren't in the space. It's pretty shit for almost everybody involved. So uh, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, especially when you look at it from the perspective of a gamer, there's a lot of memes about how we're just kind of built for quarantine. But realistically, my life isn't really changing too much. I, I it, it, Actually, it is, obviously. I, it's kind of weird. I went from two and a half years of, like, I did not have a PC. I didn't play Dota. I effectively lived offline. And now I've gone back to who I was from, like, age 12 to, to getting kicked from coal, which is nice gaming rig, I sit here all day, I drink coffee, I get my maybe one, maybe two meals in, and I just play games all day. Yeah, I don't think any of us can really complain about quarantine, which always feels kind of guilty in a sense, right? Like, because people are, a lot of people are dying, and a lot of people aren't working, and it's like, I've lost weight because I can work out consistently, you know, I've I get to spend more time with people online. I still get to work. Like, it, it feels bad almost being happy about the situation because it's not a happy situation. But all things considered, things are fine on a personal level. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it, we're definitely in a very unique situation, and it's, it's going to be a little bit fortunate for some. And. Uh, you yeah, get- I'm just looking forward to working uh, again for 
Like, I just got done doing this charity thing for the Gamers Without Borders. God, I lost the name for a moment. Uh, <laughs> Who? Uh, wait, Gamers Without Borders, that organization, where are they, where are they based out of? Uh, I believe they're based out of uh, Saudi Arabia, I or at least SCA. that's Ooh. somewhere where it was. I, I believe you might know that, Kyle. Oh, so Kim Jong-un was unavailable? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they didn't. They didn't get. Uh, he, he wasn't able to sponsor the Dota tournament this time. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure the. Uh, I, I'm hoping anyway that that uh, that money went to uh, very good causes and did a lot of good work. They'll just post the PayPal receipts on Twitter, right? Like that's how donations work. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure like there'll I, be like verifiable. There's a verifiable trail of where that money came from, where it's going to be going, right? And everyone's going to be thinking like, about it in a week too. They're going to make sure that everyone knows what happened. Like I've said about in, any of the <laughs> events, Joey, that I've worked, including some events that Kyle has worked as well, I, I may not be sure exactly where their money is coming from. And uh, it may seem like they are just blowing it up in the air, letting it rain. And I can't possibly see how this is uh, a beneficial relationship. But as long as I'm getting paid, <laughs> yeah. it's all good. As long you. as some of that lands in your pocket... It's all right with all me, good. sir. Listen, I'll, I'll wash it off. If I see a little blood on there, a little, little post, whatever <laughs> it is, you know, it's still legal tender. You know, I'll still be able to pay rent at the end of the day. <laughs> Just turn to blind He's got a point. Fine. You'll pay our high California taxes with that blood money. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, d does your family uh, guilt you at all, Kyle, for just like being all over the world and never home? Um, No, I think they understand. Um. We've had a pretty interesting uh, – it's been a very weird life, I will say. Um, my brothers and I are all relatively independent. Um, we always kind of have been um, through both uh, – probably a couple of key factors. Notably, we were all homeschooled until I was entering eighth grade. Um, our parents got divorced when I was about seventh grade. And uh, we all suffered intensely during our adolescent years. Lots of angst and bullying. So we got our suffering in early mm -hmm. when it was still mild and, you know, recoverable. And uh, now, you know, me and Zach played games uh, with, of which I couldn't have succeeded in if it weren't for my parents. Notably, like uh, my dad is an example who I had to I moved in with twice uh, rent free to pursue this as a career. Uh, one of which probably in some ways saved not my life, but definitely saved some grief because I was living in what was effectively a trap house when I was 18, 19. And about a week after I left, uh, the cops raided it because, uh, you know, reasons. And then everybody, it, it's it a long story. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a long story. It's, it's a really long story. Garage, no big deal, you know? Yeah. I'll. I don't know if I should tell this story. Um, I right, well, fuck it. I will, one of my one of the memories I will never forget was uh, I was being driven to the Newark Airport by my friend who was also the the reason that this uh, was a trap house, and he was driving his brand new BMW with his knees going ninety five on the highway while rolling. Um. And and I remember him making a comment as he blew past someone because he was um he was Egyptian and he learned to drive in Egypt where there are no lanes on the roads and people yeah. drive very quickly and uh it's not something Americans would really know it's very common in other countries this um like flashing your lights and your horn are used as like methods of communication not just anger and um, he oh was God, like I'm trying to get past you. Move up, move yeah, out of the way and, and and there was this other chick driving and also a BMW very fast, and I remember him just saying, "Yo, man, she's Egyptian. Only an Egyptian would drive like that." As he's like driving past her to like and like you know he gives him like her like a salute, and it's just I don't know. Anyway, I got dropped off in an interesting state of mind for flying, and obviously that's very unsafe. Don't do that, guys. I was really really dumb, but yeah, that's impossible. Anyway. Point is, uh, well, I couldn't have done that my parents, and now there's me, uh, who does whatever this is. My brother is still a pro gamer. Brother three actually just graduated with a 3.9 and a degree in mechatronics. He's going to go build robots. Brother number four 
is uh, pre-med. He's going to be a doctor. And Brother Five wants to be a pro Counter-Striker Valorant player. So <laughs> as long as one of them gets a real career, you'll know I'm smart enough to do it too. I just didn't because I didn't want to. I could have been. My doctor's a brother, so I could have been a doctor. That's Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. That's how that works, but sure. <laughs> Kyle, if if you were not a professional gamer, let's say you had gone through college and stuck with it, what would your career have been? Oh, God, that sounds terrifying. (laughs) You know, when I look back at my life... Kyle was not meant for a normal job. (laughs) Well, it's more... uh, I mean, this would start a whole other conversation. Um, I wrote about this actually like a year and a half ago, and Corona validated some of the ideas, notably the idea that living remotely and finding remote working opportunities should be uh, more popular because you can live like a king in 50 different countries for the price of a closet in Los Angeles or San Francisco or any capital. Yeah, exactly. Um, It just, if you don't need to be somewhere, I can understand the value you guys living in LA. It makes sense. But if you're just like trying to live in LA, for no other reason than you want to be there and it's warm, well, go pick a different warm island nation for one-eighth of the cost. You're talking um, about digital nomads, right? Correct. Or, or not even digital nomads. Like It really just means work remotely. Pick a place to live, stay there for a month, a year, 10 years, who cares? But you know, try and find a job on Western rates or even half West. It doesn't matter because you're not living in the West. Um, and uh, what was why was this relevant? Yeah, what? Oh. I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way half the time when you tell a story, Kyle. <laughs> you asked a question. The, the point Go back. Was, you did ask I, a question. I, 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 oh. I, I remember I was going to loop it back because at some point in time I was going to say, Kyle, it's very simple. What would your career have been? Doctor, lawyer, zookeeper? <laughs> like, I would have been a hobo a with a funny hands. sign. That's been my line for a while. And also, I remember now. So you would have been that hobo that says, "Need money for drugs." She's like, "I'm just being honest." <laughs> I'd sell the drugs. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use them. Um, exactly. Don't smoke your own supply. That's Biggie Smalls rule number six. Thank you very much. And uh, it's don't get high on your own supply, actually. But um, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, so when I was graduating high school, I was pretty sure I wanted to take a gap year. And it's interesting because it too. I used to have a bit of an ego when I was younger. No, used to, used to still do, but I used to too. Thank you, Mitch Edward. Um, and the reason I st- didn't want to go to college, I think I only applied to one university. It was the same university my parents went to, which was Penn State, the University Park campus, which is harder to get into than the other ones. Cause it's like the main campus, and you're a freshman. Blah blah blah. And I remember I applied and I got waitlisted and I got accepted about a week later. But because they waitlisted me, because they didn't just want Kyle Friedman, I it, it in some ways, I think, like either pushed me over the edge, maybe maybe be considered more, maybe revealed that I didn't want to do this in the first place. Because what the foreign viewers might not realize is that to go to college out of state as an American, especially a big school is literally like signing up to be in debt, significant amounts. In my case, even with some financial aid and a couple scholarships, it would have been about a hundred grand when all was said and done. And I still had no fucking idea what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah, that's cheap. Exactly. That is cheap. Yes. So I'm like, holy shit, that's terrifying. Because the uh, import, like, and this is probably why I live this lifestyle. The idea of uh, uh, personal freedom and the idea that I have, what I call three item freedom. In fact, I actually can demonstrate it right now. I have my passport, my wallet, and my phone. And then with these three things, I can literally walk. Well, maybe not now because Corona, but I can literally just leave. I can just walk out right now and fuck off. I don't need any of this stuff. I'll give it away. And if I have these three things, I'm free. Um, so the idea that I was going to give that up and accept debt was kind of terrifying at the age of 18. You know, Joey, I've I've gotten through Avatar, and I'm now watching uh, The <laughs> Legend watching of Korra. Korra. Oh, great. We can talk yes. about that later. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the teachings of the Air Nomads. <laughs> I'm getting some strong resonance there with Kyle about uh, not being tied down by earthly belongings and stuff. 
<laughs> Don't buy stuff. Buy experiences, kids. She said like a true millennial. <laughs> stuff gets worse over time. Memories get better because you forget okay. all the bad parts. Hey, everybody. Joey here. Welcome to uh, my room, I guess, if you're watching the video version, which you can do on YouTube, by the way. But if not, and you just like listening on Apple or Spotify or Google or whatever podcast player, that's cool, too. Thanks for looking with your eyeballs, for listening with your earballs. It's all it's all happy. I appreciate all of it. Um, but I'm here because I forgot to ask Capitalist to do this part of the show. And it is now midnight, and the show is going to get released in two hours. I'm not editing it, and I'm like, well, he's sleeping, and I have to do the thing where I do to tell you to listen on YouTube or Spotify or Apple or fuck, I already did it. Never mind. Um, cool. Thank you for your support. If you want to support us even more, leaving a review on the Apple Store helps us a lot. I like it when the numbers go up because I'm a capitalist, maybe, but I'm not capitalist. I'm Joey. I can see how that would get confusing. Never mind. Um, also, we're trying a new thing where we have this Google Voice number set up where you can leave us a voicemail. And if you do that, we'll just play it on the show and answer whatever you're talking about. That number is 805-328-4024. That's uh, 805-328-4024. Yes, I am reading it because I do not have it memorized. Uh, just like this voicemail that I'm going to put in the edit right here. Hey, this is Gimpy Joe calling from Texas. I was just wondering what y'all's thoughts would be on the dumb idea that Dota is basically a roguelike game. But instead of the random elements being computer generated, it's your other nine players. Uh, thanks, I'll take my answer off the air. Thanks, Skippy Joe, and I'm sorry that you asked for an answer off the air, and now you're getting it on the air, and maybe you want Cap to answer you, and now I'm answering you, and I can see how this has now just become a big clusterfuck, so I apologize for potentially breaking your trust. I guess it's a thing that I have a history of doing. I'm sorry to multiple ex-girlfriends. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, Dota, roguelike. You know roguelikes are one of my least favorite types of game series, so this really hits home for me because I hate the idea of permadeath and losing progress, except for Slay the Spire, which is a phenomenal game. You should definitely play it. Uh, also Into the Breach, it's also very good. Maybe I do like roguelikes. Anywho, the problem with Dota being a roguelike where your players are the random elements is that you never evolve between games aside from your own personal knowledge and i don't know what you're bringing with you from match to match aside from the negative mmr points you're getting from the idiots on your team who are just solo queuing and mad and hate the world so i think if dota is a roguelike it would be the exemplar example is that redundant probably of what to not do with the genre. It would be the worst roguelike in the history of roguelikes, and um, I've played a lot of bad roguelikes. If you think having corpses in Darkest Dungeon is bad, Dota is exponentially worse than that. And yes, that is a very specific reference that I expect almost no one to get. Anywho, you probably want to get back to the show because I'm sure I'm less entertaining than everything else we're talking about. So thank you for the support. Call the voicemail number, leave us a review, I'll send you an arcana, that's still a thing that we're doing, I think. I'm really wasting money at this point. Yeah, back to the show, back to the show, thank you. Okay, so, let's, let's, let's try and keep this <laughs> train of thought going. So, you're talking about your career. What would you have chosen? You wanted a gap year, you explained why you wanted a oh, gap year. Oh, that's the thing, year. I didn't know, dude. Oh, I still don't happened. know. Don't okay. I still don't know, okay? The same way you when we go out to... just like a bullshit answer to give me, like, I love animals, zookeeper. Cap. Well, I wanted to be a paleontologist until I was eight. And my okay. grandmother okay. was very disappointed when my career plans changed. She didn't really fully accept that I was just on the fuck it esports life until like 24. So mm. it took some time. But, um... Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, if I, if you've gone to enough restaurants with me, Cap, what do I get at restaurants? Drunk? No. <laughs> Af that's after. What do I get? How do I determine what I'm going to eat, Cap? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't usually I don't. ask. Yeah, don't you? Ask What's really exactly? Cool. You, you gotta you. ask, and you let uh -huh. fate and those better educated and experienced decide. So, mm -hmm. I kind of just played. I played pro Left for Dead because I was good at it. Then I became here as a new player, and will mm -hmm. probably legitimized in some ways my decision to take a gap year because uh you know my parents had a different kind of life where they got married because of me 
right after they had graduated. So they didn't really get a chance to just, you know, fuck off and explore the world. And that was what I really wanted to do. So uh, I won a tournament uh, against Moon Meander also. Against Moon Meander. <laughs> and just to, just to make sure that's out there. In 2010, in the summer after I graduated, uh, for the Digital Youth Awards 2010 in Singapore. And as the start of five years, I would not be attending Thanksgiving with family because DreamHack Winter just doesn't give a damn about Americans. Um, and yeah, that was kind of what started it. And didn't really make any money for a little while, but I got to see the world uh, three or four times a year for a couple of years, which was like big for me. I was the first person in my family to leave the country and the first one to obtain a passport. So this was a huge deal. And now I've just kind of normalized this idea that I can just stay here, stay there, go there, whatever. But, uh, you know, that was like life changing for me. And I really think that no matter what I ended up doing, I would be significantly more miserable than I am now had I been forced into some sort of real career path. Because uh, ultimately, I feel like it wouldn't have been something I wanted. It would have just been what happened. And what happened instead of that is significantly cooler. Mm. I didn't ever knew you were a Left 4 Dead player. I, yeah. uh, I would, I would, dude, I would be so down to play some eights at some point. It is one of the best games to in house. Yeah, I that fucking, would be fun. I haven't done that in years, and I miss it. I used to play. I used to play Cat yeah. for Dead. I was. Uh, I got into Left 4 Dead really late, so I was. Uh, I played Left 4 Dead two competitively. But, yep. So. The problem with Left 4 Dead two, the, the spitters and the charger mechanic is just kind of dumb. Um, the reason Left 4 Dead original was cool was just because I felt like it was more simplistic, but that also allowed for like deeper strategy. It's sort of like, yeah. like imagine if Counter-Strike just added like 10 guns. It wouldn't there was be also, uh, the same. There was also a lot more individual skill when it came to like Hunter play, for example. Hunter 25s. Uh, dude, skeeting. Yeah, skeeting was the shit. And dead stops. Better. Oh, man. I remember there's this guy, um, Karn or Korn, that um, he was the leader of this guild, Dot Sir. They were like top three. But he was nasty. They slow played every round. But this man, you could not pounce him. So the way hunters worked is like they they fucking jump off a building and they go like this to try and hit the player. And you had to and lag was a factor, too, because this was in the old days where lag was really shit. So you had to like kind of know and effectively you could swing your shotgun and just stop motherfuckers in the air. And he would do that 99 times out of 100. And it's the most satisfying thing. That was the equivalent of like just shack blocking someone in your face <laughs> you're just like i got him fuck i'm dead yeah and the best I, uh, is they would bounce you and delay your respawn so they would like keep progressing while just smacking you more so your yeah. death was delayed by seven to ten seconds and then you don't respawn for another 20 and you're just like well fuck me they just got 25 percent of the map yeah, the, uh, unfortunately, I got into Left 4 Dead uh, a little bit too late because I was I started off on Xbox. That was like all my all my gaming Casual. was playing Halo and stuff. So I, I didn't get into PC for a little while. I did like yeah. the gas can game mode in Left 4 Dead too. I thought like that was the only redeeming quality of that. You mean um, was the only redeeming quality of it? I, I survival? Think, yeah. Is that what it's called? Survival? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know another, if they have versus survival, which is also a lot of fun. Which yeah. is when you play survival, but four people play the zombies too. Yeah, and it's just who that. gets the better uh, time score, and it stacks up until you can't beat it. Yeah, that's it's a really fun game in house. That, that's yeah, enjoyed that, the survival we enjoyed that more than the actual game too, because the actual game is so much like RNG. You kind of need to custom server it out, and that's too much work. So. Okay, well I'm gonna go reinstall Left 4 Dead so we can eventually get to that. But... <laughs> Sounds so good. We settled, what we settled on is that Kyle would never want to have a traditional career. That, that's where this question Not, originally started. Don't you think you'd have to transition to that eventually, though? Because I mean, like, where what what would be like the five year plan at this point? But I don't. Um, well, I'll give you two things. Well, first off, my life motto, and I have to believe in it because if not, everything I am is a sham. Is you don't have to do anything with your life; just do something with your day. And I really believe that strongly. Um, like there is no such thing as um as the rest of your life. Um your life only exists in the now. It's um it's your tea, your coffee, your company. Like th if you don't enjoy those things, then you don't really enjoy like anything cuz the the future is fucking metaphysical. It's just what do I like now? If I'm doing nothing, am I happy? 
and uh, what am I going to eat today? And I think just the act of trying to enjoy just simple things like the food that I eat has really changed a lot of things about my ability to self-generate happiness because it gives you in some ways like a mild purpose for the day. Um, there's a, a guy that I respect quite a bit called Naval Ravikant, who is like, um, he's called the, his nickname is the angel philosopher. Cause he does a lot of philosophy and he's an angel investor and something he's been very adamant about, which I agree with is that in the age of the internet, it doesn't pay to specialize and you should try and do things that would be unexpected together. Uh, because one that makes you more unique uh, and two, because humans are varied and have a wealth of interests so why limit yourself to what like works together just follow what you're into you know cap likes to voice act maybe he wants to cosplay at some point you don't need to combine those things you don't need to have them work together you just do what you want to do for the sake of it and see what happens um (laughs) okay so joey everything that i know about you says that that you are not in agreement with this philosophy, you you've always seemed like more of a planner in that regard. Uh, yeah, I think that's just like a chronic personality trait, and I I wouldn't say that I'm locked into that mentality, but I'm more of a fan of trying to have some type of vague roadmap or skeleton to kind of mm-hmm. kind of go by, like some type of forethought or idea. Mostly because I find flying by the seat of my pants just stressful, right? Like it becomes See, it becomes a control but- thing. <laughs> I'd argue that to be adaptable and incredibly willing to change at the drop of a hat is one of the most marketable and you and valuable skills in the current uh, state of affairs, um, because you're far more prepared for uh, what Talib would call black swan events, such as global pandemic, where your whole roadmap, your game plan is fucked. Uh, one of my dad's favorite lines is uh, about the importance of perspective, which is that today you woke up cancer free. And while it may mean nothing to you now, it may mean something a whole lot more to you later. And um, I think that that's just some, that's something I like repeat to myself when I'm trying to stay grounded because you don't. Um, it's another. I think this is. Uh, it's it's some one of the Eastern guys. It might be Buddha. It might be one of the Greeks. But you know, uh, a healthy man wants a thousand things. The sick man only one. And I think that if you really just consider happiness and what you want as soon as you try and like attach goals and your self-esteem to things that haven't happened that are like five years down the road you're kind of setting yourself up for failure because you'll never yeah so difference about being able to you know a road map and be willing to like take that map and fucking throw it into a fire and then piss on it because it's not going to work anymore and then be able to be adaptable and fluid and move to a next thing. But still, once you get to that next thing, try and have a little bit of foresight. Like, I don't think they're necessarily mutually exclusive. I think there is definitely value to, to working towards something. And, 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 and that is something that having goals and plans really but, helps with. Is, is being but able what to is that through, something? Go through a grind. I, I know, like, being adaptable and, and being able to, like, kind of be fluid and do whatever you want is, is like... Great, but at the same time, like your example of me, like I, I'm a commentator. I also want to be a voice actor. But in order to be a voice actor, I gotta grind every single day if I want to actually put that dream into reality, right? Sure, but I guess my point is, if you really want to do something, you're not grinding. To grind makes it sound as if it's unpleasant, whereas if you're passionate about it, it's not work. So to go off what you guys are saying, in theory, I would love to never have to work. I have a couple of like side gigs that I'm doing stuff with, but I don't consider it really work because I'm interested in it. I like learning about it. And if I get paid for it, too, that's great. Um, and this is like to change topics a bit like this is something I feel like the newer generation of esports is kind of missing out on, which is like, you know, for me, for the first four years of esports, I didn't get. I didn't get shit. I was just, and I'm not saying volunteer. Don't you motherfuckers volunteer, okay? If you're doing work, you better get goddamn paid for it. Because, yeah, you better get fucking paid. But. You haven't done any you know, volunteer work recently, have you, Kyle? <laughs> I have done a little bit, but I have the luxury of doing volunteer work. If you are in a position where you can't, well, then don't fucking volunteer. Your time is valuable. Don't let anybody give you no free internships. What the hell is this? What is an unpaid internship? That's goddamn unconstitutional. That's what. No, I'm just, this is America. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is a, this is a prime example of like pretty much what any of the talent after party uh, topics of conversation will come into because the talent are more likely just to want to be able to sit at the bar at the hotel lobby and chill out and talk with yeah. each other. And these sort of conversations always come up uh, when Kyle's around for sure. Because Kyle, 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 you know, he's got a philosophy about life and he, he likes to be able to explore that philosophy. Yeah, because it could be wrong. That's the thing. I could be totally fucking wrong. I'm depressed half as often as twice the people should be, but that's just how it goes. And uh, I don't know if I'm right. I don't really know what happiness is. I can't uh, – actually, I, I'm writing something about this. It's kind of finished. I have to edit it. But I think that if you um, – especially as creatives – do you ever you know what the Hubble Deep Field is? No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some some context. The Hubble this, it's like, it's like one of the scope and the 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 Hubble Deep Field is like one of the biggest. Uh, it was one of the first like long exposures the Hubble Telescope did back in the 90s, and it is representing one twenty four millionth of the night sky, which is about a uh, it's like uh, what yeah, a tennis ball is. Well, your perspective, from your perspective and how much of the sky it is, it's a tennis ball at 100 meters, okay? So a football field away, there's a tennis ball. That's how much of the sky we're looking at. And you see it, and you think it's a bunch of stars, but it's really a bunch of fucking galaxies full of, like, millions of stars. And in this one photograph is, like, a fucking mind-bogglingly large amount of space. And you realize that all of your qualms and anxieties about... I don't know whether that girl likes you or whether people are going to like this video you made is grossly irrelevant to the universe. So if you just imagine yourself flinging all the things that you ever create, your entire product of your entire existence, and just like imagine placing it up in front of like that void, that one twenty fourth millionth of space, and just getting complete and utter and total indifference, right? What's the point? Not what's the point, why do anything, let's just be sad, but why worry about whether or not we're doing things the right way? Why worry about what's, what's my life going to be like in 40 years or the status of my Roth IRA? Who the fuck cares? Enjoy today. Enjoy the people that you're around, the food that you get to eat, your morning coffee with the view, whatever it is, and just take solace in the little pleasures and be happy you're alive to dance for this day. You know, Kyle, if uh, if you're, you know, if Dota dies or whatever, you need that backup plan. I think you would mm. be a fantastic, like, Preacher? modern day life guru. I think mm. I think you're right. It would have to be a religion, though. Do you know why it's got to be a religion, Cap? Because it's tax-free. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby! You know, another thing that helps with happiness? Money. If you have money, you can exchange it for stuff. And things and experiences, and so, this can all link back to uh, Zuri's podcast. Remember the, the the guy he was telling us about who started his his own religion to show that uh, you know like cults and stuff are kind of bullshit. And he's just uh, all the the life advice he was doling out wasn't like he wasn't doing anything special for them. That he was just you know. Oh yeah, you oh. say stuff convincingly enough, it can it can literally be anything. Like hey, the Earth is flat. Five G towers are giving me AIDS. Doesn't matter. Well, You're I, gonna have I plenty of people that'll believe you. Five G tower this morning because I was scared of getting corona. So is that not the case? No. <sighs> we let's not get into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, this is Kyle's uh, commentating philosophy at its heart. You say anything what? convincingly enough. Well, hey, as long as it's entertaining, right? I'd rather you say something totally false. And apparently, more than 49% of Americans would prefer to hear you say something totally false, but with bravado. Yeah. The YouTube algorithm also really likes that. You can probably get really popular. Ah, being popular is the worst. Another Naval it, uh, quote is, uh, it's, you don't want to be rich and famous. You want to be wealthy and completely anonymous. And that ain't that the truth. So I, I have a question for you, Kyle. How do you have all of these quotes I just read a lot, dude. And I have a... Like, I, I read a lot, too, and I could read that quote, but I definitely won't remember it or who said it or even the exact wording of it. Huh. It's, it's hard to explain. Um, 
I have a like semi adectic memory, I guess. I don't have like a Hannibal Lecter sociopath memory palace, and I can't <laughs> actually read things in my mind. Okay. But stuff that I want to learn, I have like a weird sort of knowledge for. It was the same way. I used to be really into sports, so I knew like a fuck ton of baseball statistics. Like I knew what a guy's slugging percentage and his batting average were because I had his baseball card and I was collecting them. Same with shit like Pokemon stats, even now with like Dota heroes. So I might forget stuff because it's been changed in the patch, but I can tell you like, I don't know, uh, what my biggest fuck ups as a drafter were at TI five and how I mispositioned in a match against wings at ESL Manila, 2017. And I just remember, I just know that in the same way I would know, like, quotes or shit that I like. I don't know. Dude, those it's just stuff just you like, care about, you remember. Do those memories just, like, randomly come back to you? Like, if you're taking a shower and you just casually think about... Yeah, something yes. Like yeah. There's a lot... Uh, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot, to, of lot of people took a lot back from ESL Manila. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <Jeez>. Some pe- <laughs> a lot, A lot came home. Some unexpected passengers, so to speak. <laughs> I don't have a Woo! I don't I don't have a yeah. transition. <laughs> the transition is just everybody make sure you use protection in all things, whether it's masks or, yeah, or gloves, otherwise. It's very important. You should wash your hands all the time. Uh, personal hygiene. Yeah, there's PPE. an epidemic out there. PPE. Everyone knows a PPE. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what does that stand for again? Very personal protect. <laughs> oh, okay. That was a different first P. That's fine. Uh, there was a uh, transition? No, there wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> also, is my camera fucked up? What's going on? Yeah, your camera you're, you're, you're is going out. What the, the fuck? Time. Hang on. People I'll turn gonna, it off and on. People are going to listen to this. They're not going to... They're not going to watch this. No one no one yeah, likes YouTube as much. There we go. This, this is a, this is now I'm back, Spotify. baby. And, you know, it. states are opening up. I was going to say nobody listens to the podcast. It's quarantine time. But, you know, states are opening up. People are beginning to go back to work. So maybe more people our, listen to the our podcast. Our numbers uh, didn't dip relative to – it dipped less than the rest of the industry. So we should, really? we, should, we should be happy with that. We should be happy. And that's wow. because you even care about numbers because it's not important, right? Exactly. The it's, it's, it's the void. The void is your only audience, okay? You're not – performing for others you're doing it for yourself and if you don't well, enjoy uh, doing it stop i'm here to have an enjoyable it's a really good sign it it's is really yeah it's fun uh maybe we could be the next joe rogan because uh joe rogan's podcast has been whew, <laughs> i don't listen to it i haven't listened to it for a really really long time i only listened to like a handful of episodes but uh i do follow his his subreddit for some reason and i i watch some of the clips sometimes and it's just like Joe and a, a group of guys, and they're just like, "Yeah, this quarantine's bullshit, man." They're, they're, just, Joe Rogan <laughs> they're like is... clouding on people for wearing masks and stuff. I'm just like, "Holy That's shit!" That's the thing. Joe Rogan oh, I saw this thing. Like... Go ahead, guys. Um, <laughs> sorry, but I saw this thing that went a little viral, and I loved it. Which was like, if you wear a gun and you talk about how it's for the you know potential protection of others, but you don't wear a mask then you're really saying it wasn't about protecting other people at all. It's just about looking cool. And I 100% believe that, and I don't care. Honestly, you want to fucking take a gun out in public? By all means. Have a registration, whatever the fuck. But wear a fucking mask. I don't understand. I, it, it's what, What's more likely that this is all a government conspiracy to take away your rights or, as historical precedent demonstrates, it's just a fucking pandemic. We get these. I know it hasn't happened before, but neither has the eruption of, I don't know, Mount St. Helen. But are you going to just deny that it happened? Are you not concerned about potentially active volcanoes anymore? Like, well, do you think that if it were to blow up, it would be because someone mixed a little sulfur? Like, what? Mount St. Helen it, was it, the 5G towers, Kyle. I just don't understand. <laughs> Why is it? It's like there can't just be a rational middle ground. It's either, hey, this is all a fucking hoax or holy shit, Jesus is coming back. 
there's no middle ground. It's, oh my god, we're on Plague 4, or why are we wearing masks? Don't be a bitch. It feels like Think about it. So Think expensive. about it. Kyle, you've been playing much Dota during the epidemic, or have you just been ranting about stupid people on the internet? No, I, I honestly don't that often. It's just because it came up in conversation. It's just, mm. it's just not worth your time. I, I feel like I did, uh, I do my part. I, I write, I think, I say when I'm given a platform to wear a fucking mask. Um, and the reason, by the way, if you want a real reason for it, and also you should follow uh, Nassim Nicholas Tlaib on Twitter, because he's been railing about the pandemic since January, before people started taking it super seriously. It's, it, there is no negative to wearing a mask. So even if it's not proven to be a positive, you should still wear a fucking mask. It makes my you get my, it. It makes my face. It's very sweaty. simple. It makes my face a little. Sweaty I don't care. I run, like it's hard to, you know. Yeah, my like, it's just that bad, simple. You know? Yeah, cap has bad. It's breath. just a feedback loop, you know. It goes into the mask, then I breathe in through my nose. It smells bad. You should you should brush your teeth more too. That's maybe that's encouragement. <laughs> and floss. So so that's assuming... another thing. You should floss, <laughs> at least twice a week. Preferably Assuming every day, but we'll start small. What's up? That, that all of our listeners came here to listen to this podcast, to have fun and hear about your life and not necessarily be preached the, the importance of wearing a mask or flossing. Flossing is very important. Have you played any Dota lately? <laughs> a little bit. I'll be honest, playing Dota, I love the game. <laughs> this is another thing I wrote about then never edited and never published. But playing Dota, like, kind of fucking sucks, dude. I love the game, <laughs> but I hate the way I have to play it. I solo queue, I get a bunch of people yelling, there's no teamwork, and that's it. And it's just, it's just rough. You play, like, a six-game stretch, and you're like, oh, this is fun. I'm enjoying myself. I love this game. And then you get, like, two in a row where you're just like, well, this game's over from jump. No one knew how to draft. This guy, like, last picked Shadow Fiend into some, I don't know, like, two roaming supports and a TA mid. And then he dies twice. He's rushing Yules with brown boots. And he's like, team, team, we're team. Like, motherfucker, first off, you're not communicating. Second, you've died three times. Four, we have seven wards on the map. Like, <laughs> kill heroes. You know what's good right now? Killing fucking heroes, taking map control, killing towers. Yet I see people itemize and play as if they're still in 2016. And then it's my fault that we've lost. It blows my mind. So no, I don't play too much Dota. <laughs> this is the mind of a professional captain of, uh, of former Dota 2 teams who is queuing in an MMR level that is probably well below his... I'm at, se at 7.5 KMMR. This is... Are I'm you like, really? Yeah. It's not like I'm in the fucking slums. It's, it's like 700, 800 Europe. Damn, like, Kyle, I did not know you grinded that much. Yeah. I'm grinding back down as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so nothing is uh, incentivizing you to play Dota right now. You're just yes, enjoying it's plus thirty or minus thirty. We haven't had an MMR reset in seven fucking years. We've had recalibrations, though. Not the but does yeah, that's not quite the same thing. <laughs> just wipe everything. I mean, There's it had a, sig it had a si significant impact on the MMR reaches, where people grinded like uh, people. It it uh, decreased all of the highest level numbers down to like eight seven k, you know, which at that point I, in time is very very close to what a reset should do, right? Sure. Without the mindless grinding back into a place and treating everybody as their equal, despite the fact that's clearly not the case. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle just looks unhappy. <laughs> I'm trying to fix this between webcam. The, it's not Dota working. In the pandemic, Kyle's just over it. <laughs> He's over people. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's, yeah, I guess it is just kind of people in general. Because again, when it comes to this pandemic, you literally have historical evidence going back like thousands of years, okay? And yet people still, like, I remember I read something by someone I had to unfriend 
about how, <laughs> you know, literally, and I love it because effectively this whole shit always boils down to like question things, guys. Keep thinking. Like, I'm not going to do any work, show you sources, anything. I'm just going to link this article on an unreputable website and then just, you know, do it yourself. And if you don't agree with me, well, you got to do your research. It's like, bitch, you haven't even done anything. You've read the headline and then vomited it to me. But it was about like the prime minister of a country in, um, in Africa, who was saying that they had tested uh, like fruit and they had tested uh, like different animals, and then they had sent them to the lab, and the lab came back and they the samples were positive for coronavirus, and they're like something's going on here, and it's like so you're telling me you think it's more likely that this is a global conspiracy than perhaps the other slightly more believable conspiracy that perhaps this government official is trying to downplay the impact the virus has had in his amongst his constituents and that is you know part of a political you know motivation to just kind of pretend everything's peachy but oh, no. the no 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 it's a fucking massive global conspiracy. That's what we're running with, guys. It's all a lie. I'm going to listen to whatever Joe Rogan, the live stream fell separate, and Elon Musk have to say. Those are my only real sources. <laughs> red pill. You're so blurry, but I can still see the look at estate on your face, which makes it even funnier, Kyle. <laughs> it's just so... F- it- and this is the thing, man. This is what's so frustrating about it. There are no – I'm not right on half the shit that I say. I'm not wrong on half <laughs> no. the shit that I say. The <laughs> truth is in the middle. The world is gray. There is no truth. We're all just swimming through the primordial soup of life trying to determine what it is matters and gives us purpose, okay? Nobody has answers. Adulthood, you think you're getting a fucking playbook – at 18 like oh there's gonna be something big i'm an adult now what changed and in reality it's just like all that shit you weren't worried about that wasn't your responsibility well now it is what do you want to do with your life oh well shit i never really thought about that i don't know well tough tough tomatoes it's up to you now which also is the only true mantra for life it's from a ancient legend of like marcus aurelius going up to the oracle at cata to ask how could he become the greatest roman emperor of all time and the oracle's response after a day of deliberation was it's up to you. That is all we have. <laughs> the thing is, you could be making all that up, and I'd still just be nodding and being like, you know what? That sounds right enough to just be fine. Like, yeah, I'm not going to. Not making it up. I'm not going to. Google it. Fact check my ass. I've just, in this last hour, Kyle, I've, I've just honestly become jealous of your memory. That's, that's mm-hmm. part of what I'm taking away from this, if I'm going to be mm-hmm. completely well, candid. Don't worry. I'm doing my best to sabotage it every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Killing some brain cells. It's a burden, right? You just gotta One drink at more. a time. You should have drink more beer. Just, hey man, just trying to even the odds. How does one obtain <laughs> drugs in Kiev? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah of course, he's ta- he only drinks alcohol. Yeah, that's a drug. Or coffee. This is a cider. Uh, a, man, a man of high taste. I appreciate that. It's not. Oh, it's Corona. <laughs> It's so cheap now. It's like the cheapest beer at the store. Because <laughs> did you see it when this all started? Oh, they all, they offered like the Who five hundred million dollars to the to change it to the Bud Light virus. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, uh, it's pretty good. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, shit, Kyle. Now that you had back to back to back ranting sessions, see, this is like this is my experience with being on panel with Kyle, except for like on panel, like there, there are these guardrails that you, you can't go off the road. You know, you're going to hit that guardrail. So Kyle really can't go that far away, but on a podcast, a podcast Hell yeah. like ours, want to see my joking. dick? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle you know, for like... <laughs> quoting Marcus Aurelius to showing off his dick all in five seconds. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen. Oh shit. Uh, now you talk about not really, shaving your face, man. We don't got time for shaving other areas right now. <laughs> telling me, man. Please. Telling me. <laughs> All right. Cap How long has this podcast been going on? <laughs> exactly. Cap wants to do a hard stop. We got to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. 
and appreciate your time, Kyle, so you can just go back to bed because it's like, God, I don't know, eight in the morning at this point. Nah, dude. We got code names. I've been waiting. I've been working like all day. I want to play poker or code names like right now. I got to get yeah. on the tabletop. We, uh, to you. It's not going to happen. Yeah, you have, happen. have you joined a single one of our games yet, Joey? I haven't joined any code name sessions. Most of them happen too early. I'm still I'm still working until like eight or nine. True. Well, we do Ouch. we do evening sessions, so hopefully you will uh you will join some. Yeah, I'll be down but... to throw down for some code names. But yes. Cool. I, I also will say um that reading is also really important. And uh I saw something the other day about someone effectively realizing they never lost their love for reading. They were just depressed. And I was like, Oh shit, that is way too real. But reading is really cool, especially during quarantine. I made a book list. If you want to ever check that out, all those books are certifiably dank. And secondly, just remember, you do have friends. You just can't see them right now. But through the magic of the internet and tabletop simulator, you can play games with them. And also right. you should video call more often because it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> so to recap, the, the 10 different things that viewers should have learned from this episode, wear a mask, call talk your to your friends, call your friends. What 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 else Table have we learned simulator. so far? Something about uh, a Roman emperor. Um, don't be too promiscuous in Manila. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I don't Wear know. protection. The other ones. <laughs> Something, uh, Left for Dead still a good game. Uh, let Definitely. your life be be woovy groovy, man, and just uh, glide like right through it. Do something with your day and and not yeah. your life or something college, like that. <laughs> college is expensive. Well. I college will say, <laughs> I have read like every single Reddit thread or piece on the internet that I see about, you know, like what do people say when they're really old or when they're dying, etc. And you'll notice none of them ever say on their deathbed, fuck, I really should have worked harder for that promotion. That's never something anyone says. They say that I wish I'd spent more time doing what I love. They said, I wish I had taken that chance. I traveled. I spent more time with my family or or whatever. It's always experiences and relationships that you really value. And I feel like I'm just lucky because I figured it out early. But y'all talk to me when you're old. We'll see who had a better ride. Can I actually finish? Um, there's an excellent... There's an excellent quote that I, I'm not going to recite for you because I'd be paraphrasing okay. it, and I, I want to okay. get it just right. Um, and he's also an excellent writer. Um, one second. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke Thoroughly used up, totally worn out, loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. Hunter S. Thompson, also incredible author, but not when he sold out and started, you know, just not writing in the 80s. Stuff in the 70s is good. And there, there you have it. On my list. All, all the things is. that you should have learned from this hour-long podcast. I, I hope you guys all stay safe out there. I hope you've learned a lot. And thank I don't you. know where to go with this. <laughs> you say thank you to Kyle. That's all you got to do. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thank you, Kyle. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. And <laughs> I hope you got it all out of your system. <laughs> I did. Uh, also, if you're into fear and loathing, by the way, before you read that, mm -hmm. there was an article that got really famous that actually started him in that whole gonzo journalism style called The Kentucky Derby is Decadent and Depraved. And it's like a 10-minute read. And it's kind of... the. It, it it's possibly the best thing he's ever done. It's brilliant, and it's, uh, it's yeah, you should check that I out. I can vouch Kyle on that. It it, it was. Why it do I not believe read. you, Cap? Why do I believe you just? <laughs> no, I, no, I, I have read it. It was good. <laughs> I'll put it on. My I don't because yeah. it was on Reddit like two weeks ago, and I was like, oh, I'll check. It definitely it. was. I think I might have found it from that, and I've read Fear and Loathing, but like I read this, and I was like, holy shit, this is great. And um, it's I really value like short stories, like good essays, because I think that it's just way harder to tell a story in like 10 minutes of reading than it is, you know, 10 hours. It's way harder for my brain to focus for more than 20 minutes on a reading, too. So, yeah, bro, never. Add... <laughs> good luck with the wheel of time. <laughs>
Imagine if Game of Thrones, the last season, was five books. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's a non-starter. But that's there weren't any plot that. twists. If we had extra time, man, holy shit, I got words to say about the, the D&Ds. And, uh, <laughs> you notice how we're in quarantine and no one wants to re-watch Game of Thrones? I wonder why. We're watching fucking Friends. People are watching Seinfeld. But Game of Thrones? Oh, not it's, a peep. It's too recent. Whoa, Actually, Joey, the, the Joey problem, you've been rewatching. With, the problem with Game of TV. Thrones is that it's too recent, so people aren't watching. People should rewatch things that are like from the early golden age of television in, in the early 2010s and then be content. You're start, so you're talking well, okay. about the West Wing and ER? Is that where you're going to go with Absolutely this? Absolutely not. You should not be watching anything that's from cable television, I think, ever, with the exception of maybe so, The Good Place. So because you've been going through your journey of rewatching stuff, Joey, what what can you really recommend as you've gone back through stuff? The Wire is still good. I fucking knew you were going to say The Wire. I was going to say this motherfucker is about to say The Wire. And what it's do you know? Meme. Wow. It's a meme. Wow. I, I, it's, not, it's more than a meme. It's still very good. Avatar's still, you know what else? still very good. I, you know I, I, really I good? watched it like three years ago and it was. It was like, oh, man. It's really good. But guys, have you ever heard of Breaking Bad? Is that the one with um? That's the one that like comes after Better Call Saul, right? I've heard about that show. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, they did a sequel to Better Call Saul. <laughs> Shit. Rewatch the first season of Fargo. Rewatch uh fucking um, God. Oh, uh, I've got to have to cut it because I'm stuttering you so much. Hurt, you Mother. gonna hurt yourself? Yes, it's, it's, like dry, it's on the tip of my fucking tongue. Strain your brain. Oh my god. Uh, ch- channel. <laughs> For uh, Utopia, we watch we watch Utopia, which is a BBC show that's really short. Um, re- uh, it's interesting to go back and rewatch select seasons of The Sopranos and Dexter because they're not as good as you remember them to be. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how how television writing has evolved. <laughs> that's an anti recommendation. How do you have so much free time? Like you've got to go down the fucking list before I'm rewatching the bad seasons of The Sopranos to find all the errors and continuity. It's interesting for me. Like, oh my god, did Tony not kill that guy? Wow, he actually paid up after all. There's salami on that pizza. Like, what the fuck are you looking at? It's really good to go back and watch Band of Brothers. Um, early yeah. HBO is like actually better than it gets credit for because Oz is also really good. Um, Six Feet Under is still the television show that's the best ending of any show ever. Um, I, I I need to stop. Like, if, if Kyle can do this with like philosophy, I can do this with TV for too long. And we're just gonna get on a bad long tangent. Well, I I will check out Utopia. I have you not should, seen especially it, so I will especially check that if you're out. any type of a Tarantino fan or like that type of like almost nonsensical comic comedy violence. Um, okay. Y- y- uh, BBC Four Utopia, which I think was 2013. They got Amazon got the rights to redo yep. the show in a couple of years, but you should go back and watch Utopia. It's really, really good. Okay. Cool. Now you've got well, life lessons on, guys. and TV recommendations, <laughs> Kyle. Thanks for thanks for coming on. No worries. And, and uh, see you guys. follow me, guys, because I'm oh, sure there's Kyle. plenty of viewers of the Cap and Leafeter podcast that don't know. About yeah, that's, me, it's, it's, really, so, it's, it's really hard to encourage people to come on for promotional purposes because anyone <laughs> like, like, like we're like a lower tier, right? Like the, the the Venn diagram of people who already follow you on Twitter and have opinions one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have any Bulldog fans here though, so I don't think there's that many people who are going to be like, ah, oh, fuck this thing. Um, Just put it in the headline, and I'll give you a clip. Bulldog, he never do that. Just Great throw it enough. in there. That's going to be the poll quote. I'll make sure to use that. <laughs> That'll yeah. be the clip we promote the show with. Thank you, I th- Kyle. I think we've already purged all those fans, actually. So, yeah. So, the, the Venn diagram. Imagine them having to sit through that entire rant about TV shows. <laughs> They're just like, ah, there it is. That's the clip. Uh, they have the attention span of a fucking squirrel that's on fucking methamphetamines. <laughs> I mean, I'm just imagining someone just trying to do it for karma, you know, who's just like sitting through this. They hate every minute of it. And they're like, I'm going to get that karma. What did he say about Bulldog? Fine. Fuck all of it. Okay. okay. We're stop. <laughs> Bye. Everything. Follow Kyle on the internet. Thanks, At guys. keeping it Kyle. At keeping it Kyle. I'll talk to you gents later. See you guys.